Independent Examinations Board Matric Class of 2021 have achieved a near-perfect pass rate, sitting at 98.39%. Well, tonight we speak to some of the top achievers from various schools. Uh, joining me tonight, Lihe Mjaku from Rodin School, as well as Joshua and Caleb Savory from Crawford International Santon. Good evening to all of you. You are the stars of my show today. I imagine it's been quite a big day for you. Let me begin by saying congratulations. Um, Lihe, you're closest to me, so I'll start with you. Seven distinctions. Well done, girl. How did you do it? To be honest, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I think it's a cliche answer, but I really don't know. I really don't know. It's just, it came as such a shock to me. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, I don't know. Well, well done. I, I'm going to try much. and ask you some questions so that you can get to the bottom of how <laughs> you did it and what your plans for the future are. Caleb, Joshua, in case our viewers may have missed it, you two are twins and apparently you also have somewhat identical minds. Nine distinctions for both of you. Was it a competition? Caleb, let me begin with you. Uh, yeah, I think there's always that sibling rivalry in any family. So I always felt the pressure of him and having to outdo him. So, yeah. What do you say to that, Joshua? Has, I, has it always been there since you guys were young? Yeah, it's always like, can I outdo him? Can I? It's like a competition almost. And I think that's been key to our success in high school for like um, this year, especially in uh, the trick. And when did it start? When do you remember uh, sitting back and thinking, I can't believe my brother got better marks than me. I have to beat him the next time. I think uh, it started early in the preparatory in like grade six, maybe, <laughs> seeing the first reports. And then, yeah, it's just the urge started from then. So basically, mom and dad have had their hands full your entire lifetimes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lihe, let me come to you. You say you don't know how you did it, but perhaps if I ask the question differently, give me a breakdown of what the year, because it doesn't just start in 2021, and even going back to 2020 may not be far enough, but 2020, we had the pandemic. What did your school life look like? Uh, what did a day uh, look like in terms of getting you to where you are today? Um, I'd say a day in, in my school life would just be going to class and then, you know, having fun. I think the most important thing that people miss out is just actually having fun in classes and like actually listening mm -hmm. and then going back and revising your work and actually working. I think playtime is playtime, but there is, there should be a time for actually working hard and like working towards your studies. And I think it's just that balance that um, I guess put me where I am right yeah. now. And when, when COVID-19 hit, how did that affect you in terms of not being able to physically go to school for some time? I think it really affected me because I, I really enjoy um, like face-to-face -face classes and face-to-face -face interactions with teachers. Mm -hmm. So it really affected me in a sense that I couldn't now go to my teacher and say, I need help with this, I need help with that. I needed to do it online or try and figure it out some other way, use other resources. But I think being at home really forced me to adapt to the whole online um, scenario. And I think I did pretty well yeah, in adapting. Yeah. Caleb, I want to come to you. At which point did you set targets for what you wanted to achieve? How many subjects do you take? Uh, well, I take, I take nine. So I oh, so you got basically <laughs> distinctions yeah. in all your... Well, excuse me, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> How did you set the targets for yourself? Um, well, in grade 11, I wanted to study medicine. And to study medicine, you have to be like the best of the best. Mm -hmm. So I think I set pretty high targets for myself since grade 11 to try and get into medicine since it's what I wanted to do. And um, also my sister, she got 10 A's in 2015. Wow. So I think the pressure was there to set the bar high. Uh, Mum and dad are really setting the bar very low in this household, eh? <laughs> I don't think you're doing well enough. <laughs> Joshua? <laughs> um, yeah, I think also going to Crawford, there's that uh, factor that it's such a prestigious school and it costs so much. Mm -hmm. There's that pressure to make your parents proud and I think by um, I think you'd be letting yourself down for not going for the the best you can be in, in terms of setting your target so that's why I set my targets high just to make them proud and knowing that they would be happy um, you know seeing these results.
What does the future look like? Do you know yet what you want to study? Let me begin um, with you, Joshua. Yeah, I plan on studying mechanical engineering at WITS, and I just hope thereafter I um, maybe go overseas and pursue my career there, somewhere mm -hmm. there. You don't want to stay in South Africa. Uh, You're done with us. You're like, yeah. thanks, South Africa. It's been real, but I'm out of here. Yeah, I think there's <laughs> many more opportunities overseas than um, in South Africa currently. Mm. And I think it's always been like a um, desire of mine to go and like travel the world as well. So touching both those areas, it's, yeah, that's what I'm going for. Do, do you have a, a clear career yet of what you see yourself doing? Um, well, I like working with well I like cars and like automobiles in general mm -hmm. so maybe tapping into that industry of um, you know maybe like creating motors and stuff like that is what I'm looking forward to oh fantastic and you Caleb uh, well I want to uh, study medicine to become a doctor and uh, specialize in general surgery is I think the main goal um, and probably I'd if I get the opportunity to go overseas, I'd take it. But uh, yeah, as it seems now, I'll probably stick, stay in South Africa. Everybody always talks about the bond between twins. So are you sure you're not going to follow your brother wherever he goes? <laughs> <That's>, yeah, <laughs> that might be a very strong possibility. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Lise? Um, I intend on studying economics at UCT. I think that's been, yeah, it's been a dream of mine for quite a while now. and. Mm. Um, I would really like to do postgrad uh, in in London, mm -hmm. so that's also quite a big dream of mine right now. So, um, yeah, economics has been an interest of mine. Yeah. yeah, and what kind of career do you see yourself doing beyond just your degree? Have you thought about it that far yet? I haven't really thought about mm. thought it through that much, but I think I'm just kind of currently following my passion and mm -hmm. my interests, and I think. Maybe in university somewhere I will get to the place to a place where I can be like, okay, I, this is what I want to do, and this is where I want to work, or do I want to be an entrepreneur? Or do I want to do yeah. this? You know? I, I want to find out: Are there particular people that have contributed to your journey? Tonight you're on TV. I imagine that none of you, or, or did any of you think that you you would be here when you're starting your matric year? You're like. I want to be one of those kids that's on TV. I want to be interviewed on the news. Did any of you have that moment? No, not, quite. not quite. So, so, so for those people that have contributed to your journey and you know that have been a pillar of strength, of hope, or of inspiration to you, I'm going to give each of you a moment to say thank you to them because we know that it doesn't just take you to be here today. It really takes a, a community of people working alongside you to enable you to do that. So Lika, I'll start with you. Um, first of all, I'd say my mother. My mother is really just my everything, my pillar of strength, really my everything. So the first person I'd really like to thank is my mom. I draw my strength from my mom. She's such a strong person and I really, she really inspires me every day to work hard. She has never pushed me. She's only pushed me to where she knows I can go. And I'd really like to thank my mom. And just my family in general, my brother here with me. Yeah, <laughs> and my sister the, the brother is here. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe we can get the families on because I see mom and dad is also here. Do, do, you, do you guys want to come on? Come, don't be shy. <laughs> We're going to launch you on night TV. Don't be shy. Mom is like, is my hair ready? Don't <laughs> worry, it is fine. <laughs> you can come through and just join us on set. There we go. So you can just you can just stand behind them. I know that you guys are not mic'd, and uh, so we might not be able to hear from you very clearly. But it's important that you're here. So here's your brother. You can thank him yourself. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for all of the encouragement. Firstly, he's a, he, he told me you'll get seven distinctions. So I said, no way. <laughs> and I, <laughs> yeah, thank you for believing in me. Thank you just for everything. Oh. Uh, yeah. And lastly, I'd like to thank I. I'm, I'd, I went to my current school um, on a scholarship program, and yeah. I'd really like to thank uh, my scholarship program for, for everything that they've done for me, for the opportunity opportunity to go to such a prestigious school mm -hmm. and just the support that, and resources that they have provided for me. It's such an amazing community. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Okay, m my tear works are already starting up. <laughs> Caleb? Uh, well, personally, I'd like to thank God for always being there for me and being on my side. And I want to thank my family 
especially my siblings for always pushing me through, and my brother for always having, uh, having my back in school and someone that I can rely on. Um, I also want to thank my teachers at Crawford uh, for uh, providing me with the best education possible. And um, even during COVID, with online learning, they still managed to um, uh, teach us well and make sure that we have all the syllabus covered. Uh, and yeah. Thank you, Caleb. Joshua? Um, I think like with the whole online learning thing and being at home, my family, um, they, are, they have been really vital in my story to success, um, especially my mom and also just yeah, my siblings and my dad. They've just always been in the house and they've never let me settle for less despite how um, down I felt and that they've always been there just to encourage me and just to go that one step further. Ah, absolutely beautiful. Congratulations to all of you and the families that have stood by them during what has been a really, really difficult two years. The fact that they're sitting here today, distinctions in all their subjects is really, really something uh, commendable. And I wish you guys all of the best for the future. Hopefully you'll be back here in the studio. I may not be here, but uh, Joshua, hopefully you'll be in South Africa, <laughs> you know, <laughs> crossing fingers that you'll come back to South Africa and contribute to the country as well. But wish you all of the best for the future. So that's Lihe, that's Caleb and Joshua. They're the stars of the show tonight, the matric learners that have really uh, achieved outstanding results for as part of the class of 2021.